to you, but his name is um, Juno. He's uh, the head of engineer in um, with eHealth. Um, we worked together when I was in eHealth. One of the few, few people I really like in eHealth. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> Juno is here. <laughs> My best store in Kano. I, okay, I, okay. So how far? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I know that that's not only the that's not the only thing we are doing. So we're doing some great work. Uh, can I share my screen really quickly uh, so I can go? Yeah, I've I have... made you co-host. So share your screen now, please. Great. Um, I think this is it. Okay. All right. I'm a bit. Can you, can you all see my screen? Yeah, we can yeah. see. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, yes, I can uh, see you. We can see it. Awesome, awesome, that's good. So uh, my name is Abu Bakar Duno. I, I'm from Guinea. I put Conakry in bracket for people who ask me which one. Um, so I'm the head of the engineering team at EL Africa. So basically my team is made up of uh, software engineers, QAs, uh, DevOps engineers, engineers as well as UI UX designers and uh, software architects. So it's a distributed team that's over, let's say right now, about four different countries uh, so with some people in Berlin, uh, some in the UK, some in Nigeria here, and some in, uh, in, in Sierra Leone. Uh, so I have about 12 years of experience working in tech. I started as a web designer, then software, then also did some product owner uh, role uh, a couple of years ago, but then came back to uh, more like the engineering part of it. Uh, so if you want to chat sometime, just uh, link up on, on Twitter. Yeah, and so I work, again, I work for EL for Africa. So EL for Africa is this organization that uh, basically was mission is to build, uh, to strengthen health system across Africa uh, by building some really, really data-driven solutions. So we basically contributed to the uh, fighting the Ebola outbreak in uh, in Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia around 2014. We also did some work with some solutions for the polio uh, outbreak in Nigeria, in northern Nigeria here. And we uh, we also did some work in other parts of Africa around Chad, Cameroon, Niger, and multiple countries. So the organization was founded around 2009. Uh, and currently we have offices in these four countries, Nigeria. Israeli and Berlin in the US. We have about 500 plus employees right now. Uh, and this is where I met Funto, by the way. So, go. Uh, great. So, obviously, we, we, as, uh, as eHealth, we, we build a lot of products over the years. So, basically, we've been around for a bit over 10 years. We build a lot of different products, but I will maybe just go through some of the ones that actually the main ones right now. So we have this uh, product called e Ether, which is basically a platform that allow organization to, to build their own solutions, to build their own products. So basically, if you, if you want to build any solution that would need to share data between different systems, uh, you can take this uh, platform, you can basically go on this platform and build your own app on top of it. So we come up with a series of best practices that you can just use for, for doing that. Uh, basically, we've made a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Uh, then another one, another product that we have that we use a lot, we, we use that a lot in uh, delivering vaccine to basically a lot of, like a lot of remote places in northern Nigeria, to, uh, especially during the polio campaign. Uh, it's Lomi Suit. It's a, it's a suit of logistic management uh, application. So we manage not only the delivery part, basically from a uh, central office to a health uh, last mile facility, but also once the, the stock get to that point, to the facility, managing the stock inventory. Uh, that's what Lomi Suit does. Now, I'm going to focus a bit more on some of the stuff that we've done for, for the COVID-19 response. Obviously, we are an uh, uh, emergency response uh, organization. We work mainly in public, in public health, and all our solutions are geared toward improving health systems. So uh, we are currently working right now with both the government and some local governments around Nigeria to basically come up with solutions that they, they will find very useful in the, in the fight against COVID. And uh, one of the first one that we worked on, I think this is about a couple of months ago. So um, we, we call this a voice resource system, uh, VRS. So basically it's an automated voice caller. So what it does is uh, 
just a bit of background first. So once the epidemic, uh, the pandemic started, what happened? So you had a lot of people coming back into Nigeria from Europe, from the US, from different places, right? So those people, when they came back into uh, in Nigeria, they have to self-isolate for 14 days. So you basically the government, what they did was to come up with a uh, people that would just call those those uh, travelers every single day for 14 days, ask them how they're feeling. Basically, do they have a headache? Do they have any of the symptoms of COVID? It would keep on, they would keep on doing that for 14 days. So as the number grew, they really could not keep up anymore. It was just too many people to call. And obviously, it's expensive to hire, to hire people to do that kind of stuff. Then and we got in touch with them and said, okay, here's a problem they have. And we came up with the solution. We said, okay, we can just build a solution that will just call them for too much, like, you know, automated way for 14 days. So you don't have to have any staff. Basically, the system will do the calling. And obviously, this really saved a lot of money. And then they can direct the resources to some much more useful uh, task than just calling people and asking them questions. Uh, so that's one. I don't know, another uh, product that we work on is basically what we call the COVID-19 contact tracer. So obviously contact tracing is really important in fighting uh, against uh, uh, COVID. When someone is, whatever someone is confirmed as a case, what actually happened was that you have uh, health agencies trying to go back now and trying to find out, okay, who did this person contact? You now, who would they, uh, they in touch with? And so we have this application that just basically allow you to know, like receive notification if any of those people are, if anyone is actually uh, found to be uh, basically having COVID-19, uh, we can send you notification as a user's application that, okay, you probably were in touch with someone or in contact with someone that had COVID, well, that, that's not being confirmed as a COVID-19 uh, case. So the way it works is that you actually, you install it on your app, it tracks your location on your phone. So this is really important because obviously as soon as you start talking about contact tracing, people are worried about privacy. It's, oh, I don't want the government to actually be tracking me. So all the, basically the whole uh, tracking is done offline. So this is done on your phone. That data is never shared with anyone, it doesn't go anywhere. So the only time that you probably will have to share it and that's with your permission is when you are a confirmed case. Then in that case, they would actually, you would say, okay, you know what, I, you will let, uh, for example, in our case, it would be the NCDC or any other health agency would say, uh, you can now, uh, you can give us access to that data, the location data on your phone and then we we'll put that on, your, on our server, then we'll send that as we send that to anyone using this application. So that information will be received on the phone. Again, the phone is not sending anything. It's, being, uh, it's only receiving information. And then uh, it will do some kind of cross-referencing to see whether you were in contact with a COVID-19 case or not. Could, it could be like a couple of hours before, it could be a few days earlier. So then once you receive the notification, then you, it's up to you now, it will, the, the app will tell you, either go for a test or go for self-isolation. So at, at that moment, you know exactly where you are, what you need to do. It's a lot better than just being around that you, you have no idea then probably might end up uh, infecting people around your loved ones. Uh, so this, uh, this part of would do that. And the final one that we've been working on this week was, uh, so uh, for example, in Kano, so we are based in Nigeria, mostly based in Kano, that's where our head office is. So uh, there's a lot of testing going on right now. So usually when they do the testing, uh, I, I, if you ever work in uh, basically with, uh, uh, let's say, health agencies around Nigeria, or around anywhere in Africa, most of the thing they do actually is done on paper. It's like they, they, were, they have like a form somewhere, they have to fill in the paper and stuff. So that information obviously will have, is, let's say that the information is collected in the health facility somewhere in a really far, somewhere in Kano. I'm not really, I don't really know the geography that well. But uh, like a really remote area, then that information that you would relate back to the central office in, uh, in, in, in the city of Kano. So usually what happens with some piece of paper, so you need, that, you need, you need to have someone that will travel from that place to obviously to central office. And then you can have issues with people spelling things incorrectly. Uh, how do you read someone uh, writing? And there's no data integrity. So basically what we've done is just to create the offline application. 
is, is this is really a basic application. It's really, really basic, but it does the job really well. So what it does is that we replicated uh, the World Health Organization uh, case investigation form, uh, the, the bill which is freely available online. And we basically just digitized that and just came up with an application. And one of the really main features of the app is that uh, it, it, basically we, we identify every single uh, patient or someone that was test, uh, tested with a barcode. Basically the barcode is really linked to the sample because when, when we actually take the information, we have to take the sample, then go for testing to actually confirm it or not. So usually what you would have, you would have in places like this, you would have like, let's say 10 or 20 people with the name Umar, Mohammed Umar or Umar Mohammed. They have the same name. Pretty much everyone has the same names. So how do you identify this one? So to avoid that kind of duplication of data or just mistake and you know, just to make sure that we have one unique identity, identifier, so we have every sample that leads to a barcode. So once you take the, in the lab, when the lab technician just doing the test, instead of just going to like click on COVID-19 cases and going through the list and finding Umar Mohammed, what he would do or she would do is basically click on retrieve sample and just scan the barcode on the sample and then it would be able to retrieve the person that actually uh, the, the right sample linked to that right person. So yeah, and this application work offline. Uh, again, because we work in remote areas, we low data uh, uh, access. So again, I, I work, obviously we work a lot with product managers. So in, in EAT, we actually have a product department. We have the engineering department. So I cannot do anything without the product uh, department. They let me know what they need to do. And then we tell them how we can, we can get it done. And I think I hear a lot of people saying that communication is key. And I will, I will reiterate that again. Communication is really important because they know really what the customer, what the end user need. And they have to relate that to us very clearly. And that's the only way we can build great product and collaboration. So uh, I heard the QA, uh, the QA guy earlier saying that, okay, the QA needs to be involved from the beginning, you know, when the requirements are being gathered. It's important so that, so we don't work in silos. So you don't have uh, the, the product managers just doing things and say, okay, you know what, I've actually come up with a backlog. I've got to put everything you guys just do the task. So we need, the engineers need to be involved. So when I say engineers, like, like uh, QA and software, they need to be involved in the in the ideation, basically just coming up with the, the requirements. And also uh, the product manager also need to be there and doing the implementation phase. It's very important that we work together all the time. And finally, one of the key things that, you know, is really that we are one team. So again, in our case, even though we are two different departments, but our reports are actually going out together that we are one team. So if things work out, great. We all did great together. If things do not work out, then we all take the blame and just learn from that and move on. Uh, so yeah, this is me. Thank you so I, much. Yeah, great. Thank you. That was really good. Um, thank you very much. It was nice seeing you again, though. It's been a while. Um, so now we'll move on.